Welcome to Real Talk Christian Podcast, where we drink coffee and have real conversations on faith, culture, and society. I'm your host, Chris Fuller, and on today's special bonus episode, we are finally dropping our interview with Desiree and Chris Bibb from the Engedi Music Festival, where they were able to sit down with us for a little bit and share their story, and we wanted to bring that story with you guys, so listen in. So glad you guys can join us on this special episode of Real Talk Christian Podcast. My co-host is currently not here because he's in the process of moving to a new home. So uh, I actually am going to go help him out here in a couple hours to do some moving, but I figured I would go ahead and drop this bonus episode for you guys today. This is a conversation that we had with uh, Desiree and Chris Bibbs while we were at the uh, and Getty Music Festival back in July. So it's been about a month now, a little over a month since uh, we recorded this and life's just gotten the best of us. And so we haven't been able to drop it yet, but uh, we're going to go ahead and drop it to you guys today. We're excited about it. It was a great time getting to spend uh, those moments. Uh, I think it's about 20 minutes with, uh, with Chris and Desiree and uh, just listening to their uh, incredible story. Uh, so hope you guys enjoy this story and uh, this journey along with us. Uh, Desiree Bibb. Desiree Bibb. And I'm Chris Bibb. Chris Bibb. All right. Yeah, put that microphone a little get, closer get to right you. We're here, it. Fuller, hanging out at Ingetti. We, we had our first we guest are. in the studio. Desiree and Chris. And what a great name because I'm Chris, too. There you <laughs> go. Chris Fuller. Chris Fuller, exactly. So, Man, Chris is an iffy name. So what brought you guys? You know, we were talking to Chris a little bit while you were away. Uh, what brought you guys to Ingetti Music Festival, Desiree? The fact that they stepped out the year in 2020 and had um, had it anyway with the COVID. Um, mm. And D- David is my old classmate from New York. Yeah, that's what you're saying. So, so you guys, so have you guys just stayed connected throughout the whole no, thing? Or no, Facebook's been the whole reason. So that's why I saw um, that they stayed. You know, they had the concert or the show, the revival weekend. Mm-hmm. They had it um, in 2020 because he's on my Facebook, and I know, and I see. Wow, that's really cool. I want to do that. I want to step out and face. So that's what we said. I'm, my classmates call me the class ambassador because wherever <laughs> I go, I try to find somebody that's on Facebook or, you know, that's Facebook where they live. Uh-huh. Don't we? yeah. We've met them in grocery store parking lots and Steak and Shake. And so anyway. And you guys I, are out of Iowa. Mm-hmm. How long did it take you guys to get here? Uh, about six and a half hours this trip. Uh, Chicago was kind of rough. So. Wow. <laughs> and, just the vol- and you guys are volunteering, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so so what are you guys do, doing then here at the festival volunteer wise? A uh, number of things. Yeah. Parking. Uh, I did ushering today. I did some security work today and uh, yeah, we love parking out there and our park taking parking admissions. So when oh, people okay. come in and pay for parking. Mm-hmm. Right. So we started that last year, had a great time doing it. Mm-hmm. Awesome. We're the first people they see, so it's like hi You're hello. the welcoming oh, that's committee. Awesome. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. So how did you two meet? I want I want to hear the love story behind <laughs> Behind this. You really? You, oh, got, oh. you got time for that? I got time. Let's go. All right. So I, for a number of years, drove a tow truck, right? Drove okay. a wrecker. So I basically picked her up on the side of the road. Literally. <laughs> you legit picked your wife on the side of the road. <laughs> if that wasn't God ordained, I don't know oh, what it was. I know, I know. It's an orange wrecker, and I love orange. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, I'm a sucker for orange and truck drivers. <laughs> yeah, that's what my children would say. Um, I've been dispatching my whole life. Oh, okay. And so I knew the business because I was working in a record service for, in Fort Worth, Texas. Okay. So I was like, oh, wow, cool, record driver, yay. So I asked him out, but he was with somebody. Oh. So I had to turn her down, obviously. You yeah. know, we weren't married or anything. It was just a girlfriend. But so then, uh, what? Two I years can, later, can, we I still kept you, in, yep. <laughs> we well, still kept in contact because our business did business. Or, you know, my my business did business with her business. So therefore, you had like you guys were forced to interact. I don't yeah, think we were in contact. We were stalking each other because it's uh, hard to see an orange wrecker and know that the dispatcher's on call when you hear the dispatcher. So <laughs> that is. <laughs> That is That's absolutely awesome. wild. So, so if you don't mind, part of what we do on the on the show is we like to hear people's stories of, of, of not just stories of life, but also stories of faith and, and how you came to follow and trust Jesus. And then what has your journey been with Jesus going forward with that? Well, you know, why don't you talk about how you had faith? So he, 
we got together. It took us a couple times to key unlock and whatever. And so he asked me to marry him, and I was like, oh, okay, yeah. And uh, then I got cold feet. And I broke up with him for nine months, and then I went out to a friend of ours in the country, and I prayed and prayed, prayed. God's like, I gave it to you, all those stupid, <laughs> you know. And so that's hilarious. That's like uh, the lifeline. Yeah. Hey, send me a lifeline. I did. I sent you six. <laughs> I sent you Chris yeah. and a big orange wrecker. <laughs> <laughs> Very true. You know what a so, wrecker is, too, don't yeah. you? You're excited. <laughs> You're a truck guy. So I went with him and went to him, and I apologized, and he's like, um, okay. I said, what? He's like, I want you back. I'm like, why would you want me back? I mean, <laughs> so we got back together and we got married a month later. Wow. wow. How many years yeah. ago was that? 11. We met, we met in 2008 yeah. and we got married 2000, one more yeah. than one oh, one. Yep, one one of 11. So wow. January 1st, one. So I can't ever forget that. That's the nice part. That's that's the nice part. That's the real <laughs> right. nice part. Like, oh, yeah. What's my name? Oh, yeah, I remember now. <laughs> it's just counting back how many years, wow. you know. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> well, you know, and, the, and um, our pastor, he had uh, uh, challenged us to stay obstinate. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. we did. We did. Um, it's so un wonderful when you know why. In, if anybody wants to do that, do it, because it really is a reason for why we did. We've inspired a lot of kids and stuff. Yeah. We we do a lot with we did a lot with drum corps. You know, our all our kids were in drum corps and everything, and a lot of kids are like, "How do you do it?" Well, but, you know, just teenagers getting yeah. in, young, the, young, right, because young, you guys were adults something. when you guys, yeah, right. yeah. yeah the day of our wedding, they're like, "Today's the day." <laughs> <laughs> like, oh my god! <laughs> you know, uh, people made jokes with Beth about that too. So, so my wife. Um, we actually interviewed here on the podcast. So I, we, we that's were, how we met her. I met, met her, her on, on the podcast. The podcast. Oh. So our first ever conversation was live for everybody to hear. Yeah. And so, because we wanted to interview someone who it was recorded for your memories. That's what there it was. You go. <laughs> uh, so, so she was a foster mom, adopted all five of her daughters out of foster care. And we wanted to have someone in the foster care world on the podcast, just to talk about that world where we, most Christians just don't know anything about. And so we asked a friend and she's like, no, 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 you don't, you don't want to talk with me. You want to talk with her, Beth. And so we, we got married, but everyone was so confused with Beth because she's a single girl, started fostering at 24, I right. think is what yeah. it was. Never been married, never dated. I was her first kiss, and wow. she was 28. And so there's so many people, the same idea just being adults where it's like, how y'all do that? It's like, you, you do? Yeah. yeah. With the Lord's help? <laughs> uh, yeah. 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 There was reasons why we had to leave early, go home, and whatever. Yep. We kept yep. it. Which is awesome because we yeah. just had a conversation around Christians and dating that we just we, recorded a little bit ago. Today. We were talking <laughs> about that same right. thing yeah. of, you know, it gets harder the older you get because, you know, it's at the end of the day, it's like you're you're adults. You don't have to leave. Like, you know, it's not like you're 16 year olds. Like your parents are kicking your boyfriend out of the house. Like, you know, it's like it's 10 o'clock. Go home. Right. <laughs> yep. No, we had to, we had to, you know, I would tuck her into bed and then, uh, <laughs> you know, just kind of give her a hug and yeah. then, you My know, daughter. get up and go, you know, and yeah. we did until, until. Um, I mean, we lived apart. I had my place. She had her place. And uh, even even when we got our place, which was about a month, a month before mm -hmm. we got married, it's st it was still separate. You mm -hmm. know, we yeah. didn't we didn't stay together yeah, or anything yeah. like that. Because, you know, we he challenged us and we talked about it and we're like, you know, we're both married before, you know, and divorced. Yeah. And so Things we're we're like we're like, well, you know, this didn't seem to work before, so let's try something new. And we're thanks God, you know. So. Right. It's really been strong because we've been able to focus on each other more than sex or anything sex, like drugs, that. Sex, rock you know? and roll. Right. Yeah. 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 Right, yeah. Right. yeah. So have you guys been able to, I mean, you already mentioned it, using that testimony a lot for a lot of the kids in drum corps. Now, when you yeah. say drum corps, are we talking like straight up drum line, like marching band, drum? Like, wow. like, like drum like corps international. World, yeah, yeah. Oh, the international. Yeah, DCI, wow. I, I knew a guy who did that. Yeah, oh, over crazy. in New Carlisle. Yeah, yeah, don't yeah, don't call him a marching band. Yeah, <laughs> yeah no, they're not part of a marching band. So, so how have you guys been able to use your guys' story specifically in drum corps with those kids that you guys are working with? Well, my daughter is a warden, so she was part of uh, making sure that everything stayed the way it was supposed to, as far as being abstinent, like making sure we right, go home. We weren't afraid to tell them. No, no, we weren't no, afraid. We talked a lot of them, but a lot of them really, I think. It, brought a different different level or, or a different type of respect uh yeah. that they're not yeah i mean because drum corps you age out when you're 21 yeah. and so we had kids that were in you know their prime if you will right yep. yeah. you know it was 18 19 20 21 and uh i had a, you know a lot of kids that knew us that grew into that so they really were um i think it really said something to them in a different way that they 
weren't necessarily used to hearing. I don't think that they may have been, have used it, but I hope that they will down the road. You know, mm. yeah. so there was actually adult friends that we had that I was like, "Come on, you can do that." No, I can't. I'm like, "Yes, you can." <laughs> so I just we don't never know where that led people. So we can only hope that. But that's did. what you and that's what God called us right. to do, and that's what you guys did, and especially with you guys, because because I'm divorced as well, and yeah, bad. Terrible, terrible story. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but so, so I get it, like being divorced and having two kids from previous marriage, and then all of a sudden, Beth enters the picture, and so, so I'm, I'm tracking. I am yep. tracking full sail right now. Yep. <laughs> so, if you guys could give a, a piece of advice to young couples that are maybe not even like teenagers, but adults that are dating and thinking about marriage, what, what advice would you give to them? Marriage takes three. God first, and you know, and then and then the marriage, you know, then you and me, right? Yeah. And we got to paste it on our wall, right? I mean, it's hmm. God, God's got to be first. Yeah. God's got. And, and be if you first. don't mind me asking, just for, you know, married, married, married man to married man, how do you guys do that? Like, are there actual? What's like, that look like? Yeah, for you guys? yeah. Like, are there definite like intentional steps that you do to keep God in in the marriage? Um, God provides seeing things like that, you know. Claiming it, God provides. Mm. Um, God is with us. Hey, devil, get out! God's got this. You know, we don't want you here. A lot of that, I would say, is just constantly claiming like, like, it. like intentionally all, reminding always, yourself and claiming the truths of the what kids, that is. The family, yeah. you know, yeah. we're. It's not. No, we always speak about God. Mm. You know, we always try to at least. So keep him at the center yeah. of your conversation, yeah, of your yeah. thoughts, oh, and yeah. stuff like that. Everybody so, right. that knows us knows that this is the place to go at our house if they have questions about God. Oh, so awesome. I mean, and do people take you guys afraid. up on that? We're not, yeah, yes, oh, yeah. we have yeah. really. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's awesome. You know, we don't we don't ever um, we 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 intentionally do not ever. And now it's to a point where we don't slip any, you know, but when we started doing it, it won't, you know, uh, say, you know, GD or, or JC in, mm-hmm. in conversation unless we're speaking about them. Um, but we will intentionally look at somebody that has one who's talking to us and slips with it. You know, I'll be, you know, gosh darn, or she'll be God, uh, God, God bless it. I you know? God bless it. You never get anywhere damned at him. <laughs> <laughs> He gave me that job in 2003. It's a yeah. um, story that I was living in at that time. But he gave me that job. He goes, I want you to do this. So I say, God bless it. You never get anywhere damning him to anybody. I mean, my postman said it one day, and I said something. He looked at me. He's like, what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it doesn't it's matter. on the TV, I say it. It's just right. automatic. Like, mm. And people look at me. and they, You know, I've got friends that actually don't say it now. Um or they, they catch do themselves, think about it. and it's yeah. awesome. And yeah. they think about it, you know, and they think or about JC, it. Or JC, she'll see, like, Jesus Christ is my brother. <laughs> yeah, God is my father. So, yeah, I don't know. So you guys are almost proclaiming God in these ways, and it's making people think twice when they're around you guys. Mm-hmm. And they do. Uh, right. Yes. That's awesome. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That is so cool. And that is the You know, I'm people that, that aren't even followers, you know, yeah. that, that hear it and they say it just because they know, right? But eventually... Hopefully they will be followers. Right. You know, right. I you mean, guys are influencing them, right? Yeah. yeah, I hope so. You're being the hands and feet of Jesus, and you're and you're showing Christ through your life. Yeah. That's awesome. Like, yeah. She's crazy, but she loves God. You know? <laughs> <laughs> but I feel, I mean, I that, I hope that's what they say about our family, right. with Beth yeah. and Beth and us. Um, we we do. No, <laughs> thank you. I appreciate it. Now, with with those friends that you you do that because intentionally bringing God into the the center of it. Um, I'm trying to think the best way to ask this question. Of um, do do people look at you guys as like crazy Christians, like, or is it more just the fact of you guys live your life and you guys honor God the best you can and people respect you for it? That's yeah. awesome. If they, they know if, we're crazy, but <laughs> well, <laughs> and Christians, who, really, who's normal? I mean, <laughs> right. Right. Oh, yeah, I mean, yes, we're all dysfunctional. And, yes, for yes. Sure. I mean, if somebody does, they we've never heard it. But I mean, we. No. Pray before every meal, whether we're sitting in Perkins or whether we're sitting at McDonald's or whether we're sitting at home by ourselves. Yeah, you know, right. It doesn't matter. We pray with our kids. We pray, you know, we pray over each other mm-hmm. intentionally. I will cast that devil out of her, you know, if if he's in there and she's having a down day and I've put my hands on her and just right. cast him out before, mm-hmm. you know, and it's he's not welcome in our house. Yeah. We have a grandson that actually he loves he loves Jesus. And they all are learning. OK, they're eight seven six and one year old and um anyway he's like devil i told you to get out of here today you know <laughs> and he's eight years old so mm-hmm. you know that's the proclaiming right you know constantly giving it to him so, right yeah 
They'll yep. see his picture and oh, that's Jesus, you know, because they <laughs> yeah, see it. We're yeah. pointing it out all the time. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, so they, they just know us to be that way. We're not nuts about like pushing it on anybody. Yeah. We're just living it. You know, so. it's that it's that little the the little stuff. Yeah, you know, like right. she, you know, wrote you know the the five minutes um, is better than none. Right, five minutes is better than none. Right, right. And so maybe it's five seconds that's better than none. Yeah. Right. But her five minutes are incredible. Mm. Yeah, well, we love everybody. We need a, actually, we need a mansion because <laughs> we are always bringing in the wayward. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, we love everybody. Awesome. <laughs> you got a mansion and want to get away? <laughs> <laughs> so that's another thing. We're always very open-armed. Awesome. So, yeah. Because he is, and unconditional. Yeah. Unconditional is a big, huge word. He restores. He's mm-hmm. unconditional. Mm-hmm. I mean, those are two of my favorite words with God. And, and, and what I'm hearing you guys say is you guys don't just say you're Christians. You live oh, no. it. Y'all live it. Yeah. 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 Well, yeah, absolutely. You that's wild. Why wouldn't you? Right, right exactly. And, and that's it's the thing, but it, there's so many right. people that, like, you know, we talk to, and maybe it's just the, the, the parts that we come from, but the idea of just opening your house to somebody, let them move yeah. in, is, like, foreign. Like, you right. don't do that. Well, and, uh, you know, and a lot of the people that we've had conversation with, you know, they got that old story, fake it till you make it, right? So I just want to present myself to be a Christian. Because I don't really feel like being a Christian right now. But you guys are, are living it every single day, and not just to others, but to each other, which is awesome. Yeah, which Are there great. are there challenges that come along with that, which is uh, opening up your homes and your hearts and all that? Yes. Very much so. Yeah. <laughs> very much so. You're like, oh, man. You know, people do things differently. Oh, yeah. And don't take care of things differently. So that's where we have to communicate yeah. and say, hey, look, you're here. For the time being, can you do something? House rules. Yeah, yeah, it's hard to do that because you just want to please them, but I can't do that. Yeah. You know, so, yeah. Well, awesome. we all, you know, pleasing them, yeah, but at the same time, we want to give them direction. Right. Well, yeah. You know, in whatever God's direction is. Yeah. You know, but Definitely. I mean, God, you know, God, God won't give you something you can't handle. Exactly. And, uh, you know, we, it's, it's, and as much as we do and as much as everything that we do, that devil sure likes to attack us pretty hard. Right. And, and sometimes you know. I feel like, you know, sometimes God even gives us things we can't handle, so we have to rely on him even more. Right. Like, you know, oh, like that's where it gets that's wild. That's a good way to explain what, just, what we just went through. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. a very good way. We were just in a very dark situation um, three months ago. I don't really want to go into it, but that is a good way to put it, what you just said. Mm. Um, he gave us something really big, and it was like, at first... When it happened, I just I learned the difference between sobbing and crying, and it was mm. really just very upsetting. Yeah. Very. Yeah. And um, anyway, so I started thinking about it and asking God for help, and He was pulling me out of it. Every day was getting a little easier, and then um, last Thursday I got a phone call from my daughter. Um, mom, I want, mom, I want to come home. Mm. So I got on a plane on Saturday, and she and her four boys and I drove her home. Wow. So, but you From know, Phoenix. it was such oh, a wow. big deal that it was ripped my heart out. Yeah, and I was like, I can't do this, God. I can't do this. You know, it's like I had to give it to him. Right. It was really hard. It was really hard, but it, it got better because I was like, okay, I can do this. You know, you are giving me this. It's right. going to be okay. I know they're alive and well, and right. that you know. That made a huge difference. I kept giving it to that, okay, God, I know they're alive and well and where they're at. Yeah. Many people can't say that. Right. So it was a huge challenge. But I think that as I was growing into what he was wanting me to, he gave me the relief and gave me back my family, our family. But mm. anyway, yeah, it was yeah. a big deal. Wow. So that was great. Thank I you. Love I it. needed to hear <laughs> no, that. No, you bet. Uh, so, so one last question to, to, to end our time together. Um you guys have a lot of wisdom and a lot of experience. I don't want to say old, but you guys are much older than us. So, uh, something- are you sure? I mean, I'm 30, well, so I don't know. Just kidding. I, I probably could be one of the kids. We're hoping the Bible says the older should teach the younger. So. Well, that's what it is. So, so I would say, like, and this is something I've been asking people a lot lately is, okay, so people who have been in the faith for a while, who have walked the path, who have walked the journey, have done the highs, done the lows, done all the things. What, what would you say would be your one piece of advice or just even one spiritual What's what's uh, advice is the only word I'm thinking of. What's 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 uh, what piece of wisdom would what, you give someone? What golden who's nugget? Up? What spiritual golden nugget would you give somebody? Yeah, love them. Mm. Love just them. love big. Mm. Mm, okay, just love them. Love them. Uh, listen to them. To t- tell everybody about him. Mm. Um, one one of the prayers, you know, the one day at a time prayer. Well, it's a, I actually um, don't know that. 
Yeah, you do. Um, do I? Yeah, don't we? What is it? Um, it's the, it's the um, you hear it a lot about uh, tied together with sobriety and everything. Living one day at a time, accepting hardships, that's the pathway to peace. Taking as he did this sinful world and not as I would have it, trusting that it, it, I will be reasonably right and supremely happy with him forevermore. Mm. So Holy cow. Those words I like that. are really mm. good. It's the, the recovery prayer um, that they do at, I, why can't I think of it? Uh, celebrate recovery? Yeah. yeah, yeah. The, oh, okay. Uh, how does it go? They do it there. They do it in a lot of Everybody recovery programs, it. but mm. it's, um, uh, yeah. It's, um, I can't think of so you're putting us on the spot. <laughs> you guys know that um, God grant me the serenity to That's accept it. the things yes. I can't yes. change. Yes. yes. The yes. courage to so. change the things I can and the wisdom to know the difference. Right. That's that comes from that. Day. That's yep. the first part. Nobody oh, okay. knows the oh. second part. The whole rest part oh. of that prayer, right? Okay. And when you say it, yes, it is very powerful. Yeah. Yep. And because you're you're committing to, to, I mean, really committing, you know, and yeah. and. Um, it just we use that in our wedding, but it goes living one day at a time, accepting hardships as the pathway to peace, taking as he did the sinful world and not as I would have it, trusting that he will make things right so that I may live reasonably and happy happy with him for supremely evermore. So that's awesome. Yeah. I Isn't like it crazy it. how nobody knows wow. that? Yeah, that's, that's I've it is never heard that living part. one day at a time, it's actually describing much more than the first part of the yeah. um, poem. Well, I just got my nugget. Holy <laughs> cow, <laughs> right? <laughs> that was a good nugget. Is uh, that both of y'all's nugget, or do you got another nugget? I would say, I would say, um, and I say, it, I say it a lot, right? Um, because we do help a lot of people out, you know, and um, that's it's God's path for us, you know, I guess. But we, we've had, we have helped. Anyway, don't think that there's anything bad enough that you can – can't get through right mm. and when you think something is that bad just look at jesus and what he went through yeah because there's nothing worse than that mm. right right you know i mean he went through oh, a amen. lot for us right right and so you know people are like wow you know and if they don't know then i get the joy of telling them the story mm -hmm. right and, and that's what i mean is that hebrews uh, where it talks about like we have such a high such a high high priest because he suffered in the same way that we have suffered yes. like yep. he Hebrews. knows he knows exactly what it's like to be a man right and what it's like to be a human and deal with the griefs and heartache right. and if if he can do it and he did it till the end i mean yeah that's the encouragement that and, and we're supposed that, to have and that end is for us and that's right. a beautiful thing you know he he, he died for us exactly. you know to give us life and yeah. it, it's it's an amazing thing yeah. you that's know? cool Could you really do is. it i mean this is a uh something that i think about and talk to people if i had to be in jesus's place I couldn't have made it to the. Cr I couldn't. Oh, have I would have been out. I would have been you know, out and too. I think about that often. It's like, oh man, you, there would be no heaven. To know you be. have the power to get out of it, <laughs> yeah, and no. not yeah. use it, yeah, yeah. that's a yeah. huge thing. Well, even the fact that in the garden where he said, "No, no, God, I don't want to do this. Take this cup from me, if there's any way, but not, not my will, but right, your." I'm exactly. like, holy right, cow. Right. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So. Well, Desiree, Chris, we appreciate you guys taking time with us today. This yeah, was absolutely. a this was a treat. Thank happened. you guys. Thank well, you thank so you much. Thank you. Us. I'm glad she let me talk. Guys. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that was a a great story, and we had a great time with those two at the Engetti Music Festival, along with a lot of other people that stopped by our booth and uh, just had conversations. Uh, not too many people were brave enough to jump on and record with us. Uh, just Chris and Desiree, really. Uh, but we had a great time anyways connecting with you. Uh, go ahead and check us out at realtalkchristianpodcast.com. If you have not checked out our website, you can also reach out to us on email at realtalkchristianpodcast at gmail.com. You can reach us on Facebook or Instagram at Real Talk Christian Podcast. Uh, you can also go ahead and text us if you wanted to, 574-400-5352. I know a lot of you have been doing that recently, and uh, we are here for it. If you have not yet joined the Facebook community group, go to our page and go to our groups and you can find our Real Talk Christian Podcast community group or you can type in Real Talk Christian Podcast community and uh, yeah, join in on the conversations, uh, not just with Mark and I, but with you, the other listeners. Uh, it's been a great uh, experience for Mark and I to kind of just sit back and join in the conversation with you guys rather than you guys always having to join in the conversation with us. So yeah, go ahead and do that. If you have not already, go over to YouTube, hit the subscribe button and the little bell notification, ding, 
and uh, check us out. Uh, I am working currently on some apologetic stuff. Uh, I'm not quite ready to release any more videos. We do have one extra video that if you're on YouTube and have subscribed, you can see it. Otherwise, you don't know about it. Um, beyond that, uh, go ahead and give us a review at Apple iTunes. Those help us get into the ears of other listeners. You can also leave us a rating on Spotify. Well, we hope you guys enjoyed this conversation. And until next time, take it easy.